So variable resistors are constructed so that the resistive value can be changed easily. The adjustment can be manual or automatic and can be made while the system is connected and in operation. There are two basic types. One is a rheostat and the other is a potentiometer. What, what page is that? Uh, 1027. So rheostat is used to vary the amount of current. And this is the symbol for a rheostat. <clears throat> Is it, still, is it part of the attendee for exam one too? Uh, no, no, but uh, you, I mean, I'll, yeah, but I've still got to cover the material in the time we have. We'll, we'll go over, we can go over anything you want uh, during lab. We're, we, we've got plenty of time in the lab. Wait, do any of you guys have an extra plan? Both of us have got one person that's not in lab though, right? Okay. I'm gonna try to cover You're as not much in lab, yeah? Okay? Thank, Thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, so here's the symbol, and the rheostat adjusts current. The uh, potentiometer adjusts voltage. You're not, I don't recall you being tested on this at all, but you're gonna, this is going to help during the lab. So what's happening is here's our resistor, our load. And if you forget about that line for a second, there's our resistor. And it's fixed. But the rheostat, it literally will make contact in the middle of that resistor. So if this is a 10 ohms resistance, and I move this to the middle, it's going to skip half of that resistor. So that 10, 10 ohms is now going to be 5 ohms in resistance. Oh, cool. So you see a, re a rheostat. This is a rheostat. Like where we have volume control, light control, and then we adjust, you know, not actually we turn the knob that brightens or increases or decreases something. So if you had an adjustable light and you wanted to make the light dimmer, you would... As you turn it down, the real side, real yeah, side on, that. which has resistance of the current. It has a uh, rheostat will reduce the current. Okay. That will reduce the. Um, that will, which side you get the dust light and everything? Like the hand. Okay. So it it physically jumps. So it, it actually yeah. short short goes shorter. Yeah. Now if I were to take <laughs> pretend this were a jumper and I were just to bypass that, I would connect connect it from yeah. here to here. Just a little jumper wire. The resistor's gone, right? Yeah. The electricity's going to go right around it. This is what this is doing. If I crank this all the way to full bright, it's going to slide all the way here and make a contact at this end, and it's going to just go right around that whole resistor. And I'm going to be at my brightest level. And as I move this, as I, it's what it's doing is this is like it skips all that material. So as I move it this way further and further, I'm, I'm now forcing the electrons to go through more and more of that resistor. Once I crank it all the way, it'll literally, all the way, go over here, it'll literally to adjust all the way over. And now, the, the current is, will go through the whole resistor. So I've seen lights where you can adjust them, and it makes big, like, noticeable changes in the brightness. Yeah. So how do you get one that has a real smooth change? That, you know, that's going to be a little more expensive, and it's going to have more windings. So if this, if these were my, literally my windings, if this thing... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Went around seven times. Sometimes these are actual wires, and that wire has resistivity in it. Every time I'd be going in jumps of what seven times a hundred percent divided by. Well, just keep the math simple for me. If it, if it went around ten times, every time I moved to adjustment, I'd be re reduced by ten percent. So now, if I wound it like a hundred times. Now each time I move it, each little increment would be a one percent. So that's that smooth adjustment. Yeah, the, the, the number of windings and, the, and how much material, it, how much effort. It depends on the the, the job that it's for. It will determine how many windings are necessary. Could you could you uh, what does the open circle mean? The the open circle. Uh, it's just a connecting point. Oh, okay. It's a, don't hesitate to ask me this stuff. So once again, you see that if, if I crank it all the way one way, I go all the way over to here, the resistor's bypassed. 
and I get full brightness. And as I crank it closer to this end, if it, if it had it all the way here, it, the electricity would go from here to here and skip a small portion, but I'm still requiring all the current to go through the majority of the resistor. And that would be at a dimmer level. Mm. So here is another here's another diagram. So essentially I took that first diagram and I just cut it cut it away. Because literally the electricity is going to follow wherever my arrow goes to. It's going to take the path of least resistance. So if I have if I'm connected right here in the middle, it's not going to go through this resistor material. It's going to take the easy way here. Then it's going to hit the resistor material. So I'm about halfway on here. And I and I redrew this one without that, because that's literally what's happening. As I move this closer to this end, I require the electrons to flow through more uh, resistive material. For your jumper cable, if you had a, a really thin gauge wire, <clears throat> would it still flow completely through that gauge wire, or would it go well, through the resistor and the it, gauge wire? it would do both. It would do both. Yeah, so because yeah. If, if it's thinner, it's going to be the the jumper cable would have its own resistivity, its right. own resistance. So not all the amperage can go through. No, it, you'd, you'd have essentially a parallel circuit. Um, now, this this is, when this is connected, it's possible that I have some current going through here, but it's going to be a small amount. It's going gonna, it's gonna to want to take the least. But in this case, it's could, it, could it go back and come back through again or not? Um, when you say come back, it's, it's a loop. So well, what I'm saying is if it, if it came oh, go back this way? Like that way, would it come back through again? Um, it, it won't go back this way. It won't. And, it, and even if it did, this is pretty much like one metal piece of metal. I mean, I could take a piece of wire. I better check real quick. You put regular marker on it. Acetone. Alcohol. Just regular alcohol. Yeah, regular alcohol. <laughs> Somebody set me up. <laughs> okay, so this. Uh, I could, suppose I've got a bare wire like this. I can take and bend that wire a little bit. And then I can take that wire and bend it, and it could actually touch itself again and move on. I mean, it's all the same math, mass. The electricity is going to take the path of least resistance, but this is still part of the circuit. So this would still be part of the circuit. It's just, it's... Yeah. But the bottom one looks more realistic how it would really yeah. happen. Yeah. And that looks like. The, the I don't doubt in all in practice all practicality. There's not. I mean, I'm sure there's some flow a little bit. Okay. I'm just wondering if it's because, it's because of the current pressure. The oh sure, I mean. And it's, and it's yes. Not going to go as, the I, other way. as I start to build voltage and pressure, this um, I'm going to increase flow here, and if I have any. Here it's going to increase also. And this is one of those things where it's, if, suppose I have half a percent going through here. If I double the voltage, I'm going to get a whole percent here. Or my half a percent, my half a percent will double, but this, the, my 95 percent will double also. Yeah. So percentage-wise it would remain, but, but the current would double if I double the voltage. So I've got a little math in there, but I think we've done math. I'm going to try to go for this. Too much time on it. We have other concerns. So here's a potentiometer. The potentiometer is used to vary voltage. You won't be tested on these. This is at least not in this class. Um, this one's a little different. The difference is the load is out here instead of in line somewhere. So I actually have do have flow going both ways. And I could probably spend 20 minutes and explain why, and they're probably better. What I, I, essentially, I have a I have a parallel circuit. The other one, the the rheostat was was all series. There was no other additional pass. But here I have my battery, and then I come down through my resistor. And then over here I have my load. I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it a light bulb. It could be a resistor. And then I'm gonna come into the here somewhere. And then they both come back together 
and back to my ground. So I essentially have a parallel circuit. The current doesn't change with this. Basically, this is a resistor, and this is a resistor. And as I change this along here, this resistance changes. But um, the, the, the current, the, well, all I'm doing is, if I restrict some flow here, it's going to increase here. It's like my river. If I start to restrict one side of the river, more is going to flow the other way. But the current's not going to change. The overall resistance doesn't change. I'm only moving part of the river from one side to the other, taking a little off of here and moving it over there. And I don't expect you to follow it or fully understand it, but doing that in this fashion changes the voltage here rather than the current. Uh, so how come it's showing an arrow connecting back to two from the load? Yeah, because what this is this is adjustable. Yeah, it's like the if I crank this all the way up here. Technically, the, the current should flow all the way to the load, and it would be at its, its max brightness. And then as I crank it down here, now all the current has to flow through all of the, literally. Okay, so it's, it's, it's like a switch from the rheostat? It's, it's similar Automatic to a rheostat, rheostat, but these are, if you look at the. I mean, it's, it's a, the rheostat you're making. The rheostat, my load is in here in series, like my light would be here. So it all, all the current goes through that, this changing resistance. So it's, just, it's, just like you're, you're, it's just shortening and increasing the resistance. It's bypassing. <clears throat> bypassing. But you're doing it. It, it can be, this can be done manually or automatically. I mean, if I have flap control, I can put one of these on there, and the flap position will give me a variable voltage to my gauge. So it could be mechanically, it could be automatic, it could be me just physically turning it off. But in this instance, the rheostat changes current because it's all, remember when we talked about earlier, what determines current is your voltage and the amount of resistance you have. So literally, since everything goes here through here, you're changing the resistance, the total resistance of the circuit. And the current will change. If you go to this one, you pretty much have a parallel, two paths, but this, you're not, you're not changing the overall resistance of the circuit. You, when you move this, you transfer some of the resistance to the other side and back. So if I move this up here, more, more sh uh, current should flow through the load and less through the resistance. And as I move it down here, if I crank it all the way down here, now all the current has to flow through all of the resistance before it travels. And this is going to move at its slowest. Because now, as I get down lower here, the path of least resistance is this little bit of resistance rather than my load. So as I go move down, the load will dim. As I raise it, and now decrease the resistance and force all of it to go through here. Could you show us uh, maybe a uh, Example of a picture of what it actually looks like. So, like, if you were turning a knob, let's say the device reads or how many resistors you want it to pass through. So you could turn the knob to three resistors and make the light lower. Two resistors. Make light. So here it is. This is these two are the same thing right here. So if this were a 10 ohm resistor, I'd have 10 ohms between A and B posts, no matter what, all the time. This wiper would be the part that I tap off of to change. This can be used as a resistor or a rheostat, depending on how you wire it. I can wire these two. I can wire. I can wire these two together, and I have a rheostat because now the power comes in here, and it's and um, this is. Oh, I get it. But if I if I take the three paths, where you see the. Um, this has, my rheostat is here, it has a 1, 2, and a 3, it has 1 in and 2 out. Mm -hmm. That would be, um, this would be typically a rheostat, but if I wired it, but anyways, nope. what I want to show you here is, this would be, if this were a 10 ohm rheostat, I'd have 10 ohms between A and B always, mm -hmm. because A and B, this is that wraparound coil. 
it'll always be. If I crank this up to the very middle, I can tap off my resistance between here and here is 5 ohms. I could have 30 ohms between A and B, and it would be stamped on there, 30 ohm on the unit. But then if I put the, the wiper or the knob in the middle, I'm getting 15 ohms. I'm getting, it's only, the current only travels through half the resistive material, and then it takes a shortcut out. So it's basically just how you're wiring it then. If you go A to B, you get just 10 ohms. If, if go, I go to A to B, and if you if you were permanently wired to A to B, you might as well just get a fixed resistance. It's a fixed resistance. Uh -huh. but, but this... So if you go to A to W, then you could uh, then modulate... I could, yeah, I can change it. I can crank it all the way down to zero. Right. Because if I bypass yeah. all this resistive material, now it's just a switch. It just goes from right And I have zero resistance. Yeah. Zero resistance. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right. So if I crank this all the way over here, okay, and it's yeah, a 30 that. ohm uh, rheostat, now it has to go all the way through to all the 30 ohms before it jumps, bridges across, and goes out to yeah. W. There you go. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah it does make sense. So we will switch over to converter, right? Pretty much. They yeah. actually call it a wiper. So you can have that, those, they can be linear or tapered. Linear, like the one I just showed you, you can go into, here's, here, I don't, try not to read too much into it, but this would be a 100 ohm uh, rheostat, and the wiper is in the middle, and I can move it. If it's 100 ohms, if I take one path, I've got 25 ohms on one side. So... If I'm wired between here and here, I'd have 25 ohms at this path, but if I went over here, I'd have yeah. 75, 75 ohms. Yeah. The only way to know that is if you had a meter. Well, I could, I could, it'll be stamped, or you so I've got a rough idea, um, and then I know down, pretty much near in the middle, if it's, if it's stamped 100 ohms, I know if, if I rotate it back to you know, figure out where center it is. If you didn't have that, you'd use a meter. I could use a meter. But it's, and it's just like this. This is on the fly, like a, the volume on your stereo. So you're not going to use a meter. You're just going to adjust it to whatever your, your desire is, brightness or loudness. So again, if it's 100 ohm and it's dead center, you're going to have 50 ohms on each side. And you can go back the other direction where you've got 25 on 1 and 75 over where you previously had 25. There are also some that are tapered, where the further you... Turn it, you get more of more change quickly. So you might have 30 on this end and 70, but in the middle it might be dead center, and you have 30 ohms and 70 on one side. Yes. What do you taper resistor? What you do is you wind this side tighter, so you have more resistive material here. Then you you thin the wire, you kind of spread them out um, to where this the amount of resistive material here is, and this is generally one wire with a with a certain amount of resist resistivity and they just it's just one long wire wrapped in a close you know and that's the little things we were working on yesterday the left uh I have a little little knob on it uh, i don't think we had those yet it would look like this oh. and we have some of these mounted in a board we did in a few days so um again this isn't testable <laughs> But we will be doing this in the lab, and we will be measuring and taking some of these measurements. So there's the potentiometer. We already saw that. The winding was the increase in resistance. It added winding. Yes. Yeah, so, so I might, I could even determine the type of material I have in there. You know, and, and the little tiny thin strand, yeah. 100 feet of it, I could wrap into a little short distance. Yeah, and I'm just absolutely. tapping into it along the length of it. Uh, so. So the rheostat, that's this resistor that's being moved up and down. They're pretty much, they're, they're almost identical. Almost, but that, that, that wouldn't be a rheostat we're using that photo, right? This, this could be used as either, these are, these are showing uh, potentiometers. Okay, so those are potentiometers, but a real, real stat is, is just a coil of wire, wire by itself and there's a little piece of metal that travels up and down it. Yeah, so it would be. Like a current current it's not like a it would be like this. It would be one. Um, it only has two connections. A rheostat. If it's true rheostat, it only have two wires on two connections. Okay, so rheostat singular. It has two connection points, and the um, potentiometer is going to have three. Okay, thank you. So you got one in and one out. It's a it's a straight resistor that we can adjust. 
potentiometer is going to have three connections. So there's our three connections potentiometer. And we have our three connections. We have each end of the resistive material, and we have our wiper. Also, <clears throat> in this action right there. Three connections. Um, I showed just for fun, and I don't want to spend too much time on this. You can skip the resistor for now, but all the resistor does is reduce the voltage to the LED. But I've got Here's my power. So the resistor's dropping the 9-volt battery to a power that the LEDs will use. So the power comes in. They're putting the power into the middle on the wiper itself. So we're going in on the wiper. It doesn't matter which way we go. It depends on the application. And here we're sending the power in. So the potentiometer, we can twist it one way. If we twist it to the left, we shorten the distance on this side, and the red will dim. And the, uh, I'm sorry, the red will brighten, brighten. we shorten the distance, and this one will dim. We rotate it the other way, and they'll smoothly do this as we go back and forth. One will get brighter, one will get dimmer. Do they do location lights? Location, um, no, generally location light, if it's just flashing, is just, it's not an LED. Like, LEDs drop, they're, they're quick, but when you have an incandescent bulb, you turn it off, that, that metal has to cool. Okay, that's where you see a bulb looks like it tends to go off kind of dim slightly. But an LED, once you shut the power, it's, it goes out immediately. But uh, this, you could, I don't know how you, this was on, on the internet. I thought it was a good idea just to show you how the potentiometer work, works. I can't imagine right now a, a good practical application. We also have thermistors. Thermistor is a resistor, and that's the diagram for thermistor. Essentially, um, it's a variable resistor that's temperature sensitive. So, um, hotter, it gets hotter, cold. Yeah, and it's it's not an on-off. It's not a thermal switch. It actually it'll actually uh, change as a temperature changes. Air conditioned heating units will have these. Oh, so like as the room gets warmer. Yeah. Oh, is that what the, and some of the, um, you know, the six things on the, in the airplane, the cockpit, one of them. Oh, man. What's in the, uh, glass? Yeah. yeah. The, is that where the piece of metal, like, moves slowly from the temperature and then it hits the, there's a, there's a coil that This is going to be a little, little disc. Uh, that generally will mount to a surface that, that is sensing the temperature or in, in, embedded in the windshield. You don't have two leads on it. That's showing you two, the thoughts are showing you two connections. Um, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I, I think this is interesting. This is a kitty system in canal line. I think there's some over here right in the, on the shelf back there. I don't know if that's a kitty or not. That's the brand. This is a fire detection system in an airplane. So you've got your negative that runs through this wire, and you've got a positive. And there's, you'll notice there's two lines. This is actually one loop. I don't know what aircraft this is from, but generally, larger aircraft, you have two paths, and it's an A and a B channel. And the computer... Uh, is looking for false positives. If A channel sees the fire but B doesn't, it won't. Uh, it won't alarm. It won't. It will only alarm if A and B see a uh, a, du a, a dual signal. If one of them were to break, if a mechanic were to bump one and tear it off and damage it or, or pinch it, then it would be an open circuit, and the computer would say, "Hey, B loop is not functioning. It's open." It would send a message to the cockpit. For that you can quickly find out what's what and where. Yeah. Now if the system, if B is damaged, the computer say, okay, B screwed up. Now if A sees a fire, it's going to say, I have no choice but to, to alarm because B is not reliable. So I'll just have to trust A by itself. And that's with the thermistor, is that right? That's the thermistor. So this would be one thermistor. And so this material that's yellow, as the temperature changes, its conductivity changes. So there's a card, a box, where they're showing amps here and battery. 
that the amperage or the current will increase as the temperature changes. And this is the wheel well of a 757. If you're standing under the airplane looking straight up at the ceiling, the wheels fold up right here. And it's these coils go over the tires and brakes. So if you have a fire, the heat rises, um, the loop C signal sends a message to the car, to the computer, and then the pilot gets a message. Do you know how we put fires out, break fires? I know these guys know. Put the gear down. Put the gear down. <laughs> and wind, that, that high speed wind cools and blows it right out. Uh, this is my A and B channel. Here are my ink canal lines back here. And then this is where it actually, this is uh, where it all comes together to uh, cables, where it goes to the computer. I, mean, I can't tell you what's going on here, but those two lines, this is where it all turns into wires. This is just nice stuff. But these, those signals from the backs of those wires come to uh, cards, card file. And those are all SD, uh, static discharge sensitive. So you put a wrist strap on any time you handle these, there's messages all over. So that's just a little added information. That's showing 757 gear and the, I, the, the uh, display. Mm -hmm. And they can be different. You can have uh, nacelle overheat. It doesn't necessarily have to be fire. You just put a range of temperature that you want to uh, detect. So this nacelle, if it overheats, it will see a temperature rise, not necessarily a fire. It may be not as hot. It will it'll alarm earlier than a fire temperature would. And this is not a fire uh, susceptible area, but it's an overheat area. And then you've got uh, the darker ones are fire areas. So that's a 757. It's a uh, Pratt Mini AT-88. No, no, I think there's another one. I've got many different things. I pass. I, it's fun to go through this stuff when we have one more time. And then we have a photoconductive cell. This is another resistor. So this is the typical diagram, and this is your rays of light coming in. It's just another resistor. And this is where there's one right here. There's two of them. There's one here and here. So in the cockpit, as the light changes, the, you get an auto dim on the display. Can you go back to the last slide? So the photoconductive cell is similar to the thermistor. Like the thermistor, it has a negative temperature coefficient. Unlike the thermistor, the resistance is controlled by light. Okay, so basically they're almost identical, but one is light sensitive and one is temperature. Voltage dividers. This is what I think we experiment with this in the lab. We can get different voltages. Here's our battery, and we have three resistors. This it's a little confusing with this A, B, and C right here. But if you just ignore the vertical line for a moment, you'll see a, ba a battery or DC supply and three resistors. I don't know where that oh, is. Oh, there it is. 1038. Okay, 1038. 1083? Yeah, figure 1083 is 1038. So, if you remember, each of these resistors has a voltage drop. And depending on the resistance will determine how much that voltage drop is. Well, I can tap off of these. Here's my ground back here. It shares the ground with the battery. So right here, if I tap off, if I've got a 12-volt battery and I tap off C, any idea what I'm going to get? I'm going to get 12 volts. Because I'm hooked to the ground, and I'm hooked to C, which is literally both sides of the battery. As I get to B, I'm going to lose a few volts. If this has a 2-volt drop and it's a 12-volt battery, I can tap off a B in the ground and get 10 volts. And if I, if I go to another, depending on the resistor, if another two volt drop, I could. They could all be. Well, let's see, twelve volts. Twelve divided by three. Four. Whatever. I, I mean, I'm trying to keep it simple. They could be the same, or they could be different. It just depends on the application. I could tap in at different points and get different voltages. 
I have a fan, a light, if a piece of equipment is running, and uh, there's other things that I want to have happen. And that's it for that one. Okay, well, this is a 